Good morning. It's just gone 10 o'clock and I am going to do a little bit of stamping with you guys today. Uh, it's only a fairly quick video but I just wanted to showcase one of my new favorite cards. I did this one in the last couple of days. You may have seen me post it. This one here. And I'm going to show you how I made it. Really, really simple. Only uses two stamps, um, but it also uses the In Good Taste uh, Designer Series paper. You can see it's that beautiful wood grain effect. Beautiful wood grain paper. Now, this is a double pack of paper. Really, really, um, it, like it's a completely full on piece. So instead of just the normal 12 sheets, it's double. And um, it is also marked down in our sale right now. So instead of being $37 as it normally is here in Australia, it will be $31.45. So it almost, if you were ordering a pack of that online, it would cover your postage pretty much. So um, if you're ordering a couple of packs of paper, you are going to be covering your postage on that. So um, think of it as free postage. And we like that, right? Okay, all right, so I'm gonna pop this in the holder, we'll get going, and I'll show you how easy this card is to make. Let's flip this camera around. Okay, can everyone see that okay there? Okay, it's a bit of a gray old day here today. I'm looking out my window and normally it's brilliant sunshine lately, but not today, today is pouring rain. We had rain over the weekend a bit as well, so uh, my daughter started her HSC this morning, so she's just uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in, so uh, it started at 9.50 this morning, um, so it'll be good to have that out of the way. <laughs> Alright, so let's bring in the pieces we need. Um, there's only six pieces to this, it's actually a pretty simple card to prepare and make. So half a sheet of cardstock, This I'm using Whisper White Thick. And I've cut that in half and now I'm folding it in half again to make my card base. And I do that pretty much for all my standard size cards. Um, occasionally if I want to do something different like a square card or a slimline card. Um, oops, I didn't get my bone folder but that's okay. We'll just pretend that I've bone folded this. I will do that after the fact and that's okay. Alright, then put that aside. Then I've got some other pieces here. So I've got a piece of Early Espresso. I really like the way Early Espresso looks with this wood grain paper. And you can see the other side is totally different. This paper is just, it's probably my favourite paper this year. It's absolutely beautiful, although I do have a couple that um, vie for favourite paper. <laughs> um, but I just think this one's really versatile and great for masculine cards as well as... Um, as well as in this case Christmas you can use it for Christmas as well and I've done it for a couple of cards lately for Christmas cards so I'm actually going to go ahead and actually use my I'm using stamp and seal if you haven't used this this is super sticky this stuff much much um, stickier and better adhesive than snail was however it's not snail which means you need to act differently than snail and so there's a little bit of a learning curve for people who are starting to use it I hold my I make sure it's sticky first which it is then I hold it low down and I don't go too fast, I just go slow and then I lift it at the end. And that gives me a nice a nice sticky edge there. I always do, when I'm doing a piece of cardstock like this, I do my uh, short sides and then a little bit in the middle of my long sides. I find that more economical, you go through less that way. Mind you, this, this stuff, there's 15 metres on a roll, whereas Snail was only 12. so. It is a little more expensive, but you're also getting more adhesive on the roll, so it kind of works out. All right. It's well worth practicing because once you've got the hang of it, as you can see how easy it was for me to do, it's fabulous. Super, super sticky. That's not coming off anytime soon. <laughs> so, or ever. All right, then I'm going to um, look at my other pieces. I'll set this one aside. And I've got a piece here that is just, this is one of our stitch nested dies. Now, these I use a lot. I have found them so useful. They're called stitched nested labels. And you can see you get lots of different ones in there. How many are there? There's nine in the pack. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's a really good set. I do tend to use them for sentiments, the smaller ones particularly. And then I use big ones like I'm using, this is the second largest one, not, not the very biggest one. To make this shape and I've already pre-cut it as you can see. Um, now for anyone who's coming to my hunter classes tomorrow um, 
you're going to make this card tomorrow. So if you don't want to see how I do the stamping on this, look away now. Although I think most of you like seeing what it is you're going to be doing and um, and how it all works. Now I'm only using one stamp. This is the In the Pine set. I'm going to use, um, you can see I've used a different sentiment on this one. I've called it Peace on Earth. But for this one today, I'm going to use Season's Greetings. And then I'm using this kind of more watercolour looking. So this is like a more detailed tree. This is more of a watercolour one. You can use this one to colour this one in. Gives you a little bit of uh, colour over the image. But I'm going to use it today by itself. Um, and I've already put it on a block. So here it is. Ready to go. Um, I'm going to start with my lightest colour. The colours I'm using for this is Grey Granite, Just Jade, and I may use Shaded Spruce. You can actually get away just with the two colours, but I may add a little bit of Shaded Spruce towards the end. Also, I did my Sentiment in Early Espresso, so I guess that is a third colour there, isn't it? So definitely these two. This one for a Sentiment, but if you don't have all these, you could get away with just these two. Okay, so I'm going to start with the lightest, which is Grey Granite, and I'm going to be inking this up. It's a new pad, pretty fairly new, so oh, better put it on the right way. All right, so I'm inking that up, and then what I'm going to do, if you, um, I want this to be pretty light, so let's see how dark it is. It's not too bad, but I'm going to stamp it off first so I get a lighter image, and I want these, these ones to be up a little higher. I've managed to get a bit of a smudge down the bottom, but that won't matter, because now I'm not, I want to make sure that they're not all exactly the same height, so I'm kind of stamping off and then going up and down. And I only want a few of these. Now that I've stamped that off, I'm actually going to do a couple more, but even lighter, without, without re-inking. Alright, so I'm kind of just being very random, you can see that there. Then I'm going to use the same one, and because I'm going up to a darker colour, I don't technically need to clean my stamp. If I'm going from a light to a dark colour, I don't usually bother. Um, anything that makes stamping easier, I think, is a good thing. Not that it's hard. Alright, so let's see how dark this is. That's pretty dark, so I might start by stamping that one off as well. Now this one, I'm going to go a little lower, because these ones are kind of in front. do a couple of more. This is why you don't really need to add the shaded spruce because you can actually get quite a darker one just by doing second, first and then second generation stamping. All right, you can see we're kind of getting a little forest of trees here and it's looking really nice. So I'm trying to give the idea that the ones in the grey ground are a little bit further away and the green ones are the closer up ones. So let's, let's add a couple more. There we go. I think I'm calling that enough that looks like a forest looks good i love the effect that you can get just with one tree i think that's fantastic and this is a really really good set for doing all kinds of backgrounds um you've seen me do a few different backgrounds with these lately so i really really like them all right the other thing i want to do for me it's looking quite white so if you have a look here it's very white on that background you could leave it like that but i decided to go with a sponge here into my grey granite ink. Just dab your sponge in and then I'm going to go over the edge and kind of bring my colour down a little bit and it kind of almost takes on it takes on a bit of a green tinge to it. So I'm going to pull that colour down. This is different to the misty uh, technique I did the other day. That was done with white ink on a darker colour and that gave the look of a mist coming down over the trees. This is just to fill in a bit of it so that stark white isn't so stark against the edge. And just going to zip around the edges and so we don't have any of that white showing. There's not much of it down the bottom here anyway because we've already stamped over that edge. You can keep going with that if you like. You could keep bringing some more colour down. Totally up to you. Alright. But I'm happy with how that's looking. That's looking really nice. Alright, so you can see this look. So let's pop it here and see what that's going to look like. It's looking really good. I love the way the wood grain has actually got like little knots and, and uh, weathering to it. It looks really very realistic. Okay, that's how that's going to end up. 
Before I put this on though, I've also got a very thin strip of, I've used brass, but you could use gold or even champagne or any colour you like. But I just did this to add a little bit of brightness. And I'm going to use my stamp and seal, make sure it's sticky. And I'm just going to run that along the back of this. I'm going to pop it. where I want it to be just above the stitched edge because this is a stitched edge that goes all the way around and then I'm going to grab my scissors whoops I should have grabbed my paper snips I only have my ribbon scissors so shh, don't watch don't watch while I use my ribbon scissors to cut paper because no one else is ever allowed to do that I'm just going to cut that off in line so now we've got a nice little strip there all right now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to use some dimensionals over the back so I'm going to put one in, in each corner, not too close to the edge. Having dimensionals not too close to the edge gives you a bit more scope. You can slide things underneath or, or do all kinds of things in that. Now I also want, in this case, normally that would be enough, but I just want to add one on each end. And I'm going to take the backs off them too. And maybe, I think one on each end is enough. Now I've got this gorgeous faux suede ribbon this is one of my favorite ribbons it's from the uh, world of goods suite and it looks fantastic it's it feels lovely it's easy to tie easy to work with it's a great ribbon to have in your collection it looks very manny very blokey i think so it's good for um good for masculine type cards and it goes really well with the in good taste paper all right so you can see what i've done is i've just stuck that to the dimensional here on the back to hold it in place and I'm going to loop it over here on the end and I want so what this does it just holds it in place with those dimensionals on the back there and I'm going to have a little edge of my ribbon maybe it might go a little slow, a little closer Right, so it's looking like this. Can you see that there? Now I've got enough dimensionals here that it's going to hold that. I'm just going to add one more just for fun in the middle. Take the backs off all of them. But the one on each end is holding the ribbon in place. And that ribbon, I think, makes a lot of difference to this card. I'm putting it centred. But a little bit closer to the top than the bottom because I'm going to add the sentiment at the bottom and for my sentiment I've got a little strip here of half an inch wide and you're wondering why am I switching between centimeters and, <laughs> and inches um, that's because these punches and this is the latest pick a banner punch love this one it does the flagged end or you can have the concave end if you want I think I can remember which one's convex and which con concave but you get the idea one goes in one goes out um, I mostly use this guy the little flagging of the ends I'm going to put it it's half an inch wide which fits perfectly in that narrowest channel so they're half inch three quarters of an inch and one inch wide so I'm going to just pop that all the way in make sure it's all the way through there and I'm not quite happy with that I didn't center that very well That's better and then I've got from the same stamp set from the in the pine set once again I've got this little season's greetings there's also a thinking of you so this is a good set because you can use it all year round and like I said I think it works great for guys so I'm going to use my early espresso because early espresso will match our ribbon or our, let's call it um, it's not actually called ribbon it's called trim suede trim I think that sounds less girly too <laughs> so now that I've flagged one end, I'm just going to, I'm going to bring my head in, I apologise for that, but I want to make sure I get it straight. And I'm just popping that right there. And then I'm just going to trim a little bit off the other end. And I'm going to flag the, the other end there. Make sure it's through. There we go. Um, if you like, you've, while we've got our, um, our sponge with a bit of soft suede ink, sorry, not soft suede, um, grey granite on it, we might as well zip around that as well. And I'm going to add a little bit.
bit of snail. Sorry, seal. Still getting used to it. <laughs> and I'm going to pop that just here. So it's slightly under the, the main piece. There we go. And then I'm going to use, now you could either use seal or seal plus for putting the cardstock to cardstock. Seal plus is actually easier to use, but like you can see how beautifully that comes out. Once you've got the hang of this seal, you will love it. It is fantastic. Um, and the adhesive itself is just so strong. It's great. Things stay nice and secure. But you just have to learn how to use it. There we go. Now I have two beautiful cards. A little different to each other. Slightly. But other than that, I think they look great. Um, what do you think? Do you like them? So now I've got another card ready for tomorrow for my class. Um, and if you're making this class with me, you've got a head start because you're going to know what to do when you get your pieces tomorrow. Um, for those of you who are not coming or not able to get to classes, that's absolutely fine. And I will keep coming back here and making things from time to time so that you can see how, how to do all kinds of things. And I've got a couple of new YouTube videos coming out as well. So um, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that um, I can show you those when they, when they come up. Um, I'll also post them here, though, so that you can see. And I hope you like them. There we go. Bit of fun, hey? I hope everyone is keeping well. I'll go back through the comments. I'm sorry um, I couldn't look at them while I was creating, but um, I'll go through them. And um, I hope everyone is having a really lovely day and happy stamping. Bye-bye.